instead of the generator generating all the successor states, and then the tester finding out that this state, this state, and this state are identical to the initial state. One could make the generator itself smarter and say that the generator will not even generate these three states because it will know that it should not generate states that have already appeared. This means that we can either provide the generator with some additional abilities or the tester with some additional abilities or both. If the generator was smarter, then it would not even generate these three states because they are non-productive. However, it still may be the tester that determines that this state is illegal and therefore dismisses it. We could even go one step further and make the generator even smarter so the generator will not generate this particular state. And thus the balance between the generator and the tester can shift depending on where we try to put knowledge. For this problem, for this relatively simple and small problem, the balance of responsibility between the generator and test might look like a trivial issue. But imagine a problem in which there were a million such states. Then whether we have the generator very smart or the tester very smart or both can become an important issue. This method of generator and test, in fact, is a very popular method in some schools of AI. Genetic algorithms, for instance, can be viewed as generate and test. Given a number of states, they try to find out all the potential successor states that are possible, given some simple rules of recombination and then have a fitness function that acts as a tester. Genetic algorithms, therefore, are an effective method for a very large number of problems. They're also a very inefficient method because neither the generator nor the tester in genetic algorithms is especially smart. 